your Massachusetts real estate market update for September 19th, 2022. So we're going to talk about interest rates. Boy, do we need to talk about interest rates because we're talking multi-decade highs here and it is a big driver of our market. As always, we're going to talk about single family and the condo weekly data that we saw last week. We have some interesting developments there. We're going to talk about builder confidence because it went down. And what does this ultimately mean for you, the buyer or uh, a homeowner uh, competing with these builders, right? And then we're also, just for fun, we're going to take a look at the most expensive condo in the state of Massachusetts that hasn't even been completed yet, and their asking price is $20 million. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Homes team. I am a recovering investment banker, um, now a real estate agent. I've sold more than 1,000 houses and one of the top agents in the state of Massachusetts. So if you have any questions, I promise you, I will be sure to answer them to you. Um, I'm a wealth of knowledge, but most importantly, if I don't know the answer, I'm going to let you know, and then I'm going to go find that answer for you. So let's just jump into that single family data where we currently have 5,333 single family homes on the market. Now, this is a two week streak of inventory gains, right? In the last two weeks, we have actually seen inventory gaining, which is a great news for buyers out there. We still have 181 units more than uh, we did before the week before Labor Day. And then also we have 358 units more than this same same week that we saw last year and that's really important because this week last year was the high point for inventory in the state of Massachusetts in 2021. After this week, we literally saw inventory just declining all fall where we were selling a lot more houses than were coming on the market, which set us up for historical inventory lows in the winter of this year. So we're in some uncharted territory. We'll see if this year measures up with last year or will inventory continue to grow. We're about to get a lot of the questions that we have answered as we get this fall market ultimately going. Now we had 1,166 newly listed properties that came on the market in the state of Massachusetts last week. The average amount of new listings in July and August, okay, was 1,110. So this 100, 1,166 number, it's right about average for what we've been seeing for the last two months. So it's right there. It's important to know that we're about 250 units off from the numbers that we saw coming on the market back in 2021. We we had 1,123 single family homes go under agreement during this week leading up to September 19th. Now we expected to see this bump in the amount of properties that went under agreement this week because we saw a big bump in the amount of properties that came on the market last week. So it made more sense. More houses on the market, well, more buyers could buy more houses. So this is exactly what we expected, but it's important to note that it's still a 22 and a half percent decrease in the amount of sales activity, right? Buyer demand that we saw last year and this is compared to a 17.6 percent decrease in the amount of supply on the market so demands here supplies here there's about a five percent delta right there and that is the statistic that we need to keep our eye on because ultimately if that continues to grow then that right if, if we continue to see more supply and and less bu uh, buyer demand then that's ultimately the softness of the market so that's the exact statistic that you need to keep your eye on now we had nine 900 single family houses sell in the state of Massachusetts for an average sales price of 732,000. Meanwhile, a median sales price of $575,000. And that months of inventory, this is the gauge in order to figure out how hot the market is, right? We currently have 1.33 months worth of inventory on the market compared to last week's number of 1.31 months. So we are still in a very strong seller's market. But it's important to note the last two transactions that I put under agreement. One was uh, they were asking $440,000. I actually got that under agreement for $410,000 with $5,000 back in closing cost assistance. So it's really a $405,000, you know, kind of sales price to the buyer. So 440 down to 405. And then on top of it, I got over $7,000 in home inspection issues. Uh, the deal before that asking price was 650,000. We went under agreement for 630 with an additional $5,000 back in home inspection issues, right? These are things that were not happening just six months ago. Buyers, they're they have a lot of pricing power in this market. They have a lot of power. You're able to get some really good values out there right now. Um, I'm doing one right now where I'm currently negotiating and it's a home sale contingency. It was impossible 
to get a property with a home sale contingency under agreement just six to nine months ago. You just couldn't do it. So, you know, home buyers, this is a great time for the fact that you are getting better terms. You don't need to feel rushed like, hey, you need to make a decision this minute. Otherwise, you don't stand a chance. It was just absolutely absurd. It was an awful market, quite frankly, to be in. We're seeing some normalcy to this market, which is a really great thing. And by the way, speaking of these guys that are going under agreement, these clients that I'm working with, I have been, I don't want to say overwhelmed, but I have been just so delighted with all the people that have been emailing me uh, for the last couple of weeks that have been watching the video I can't thank you enough it seems like email is the most popular way to get a hold of me so that works fantastic but ultimately it's worrying me about my bandwidth how many people can I work with so I'm really gonna kind of start limiting how many people I can work with I have a lot of amazing members on my team that will knock it out of the park with you but um, as I get busier and busier I am definitely going to kind of limit the amount of buyers that I'm working with so if you're thinking about buying a house in the next three to six months um, ultimately uh, you'd love to work with me I'm sure Sure, I'd love to work with you, right? Um, you think I'm the guy that, that could do a great job for you, which by the way, I think I could, then please email me, let me know so that way I can kind of put you on my list and kind of keep you, you know, keep, keep you in mind as different people come in and different opportunities come in. Because I, I, I want to service and help all the people that I've been talking to for the last couple of months. The condo market, we have 2,751 units that are currently on the market. This is only 185 units or a little over 6% behind last year's inventory numbers when we had 2,936 condos currently on the market. So we're catching up to the levels that we saw ultimately last year. Um, and it's important to know that uh, next week, or really it's kind of this, this week is when we hit the inventory highs for the condo market last year, right? So again, just like in the single family market, we're starting to see the, the fall market you know, unwind here and we're starting to see what does the rest of 2022 really have in store? What's the story? What will this ending story of 2022 be? That's what we're ultimately starting to see. We saw 613 newly listed condos come on the market in the state of Massachusetts. Now, this is about 23% below last year's numbers. Meanwhile, we had 421 condos that went under agreement and this was 36% below last year's numbers. So demand is down 36%. Meanwhile, supply is down 23%. So compared to the delta of 5% for single families, well, we're really seeing a delta of 13% in the condo market. So again, this is the stat. This is what you need to keep your eyes on and trying to figure out what is happening with the future of our market. Are we going to start seeing inventory balloon, right? Um, this is what we need to continue to look at as they continue to jack up interest rates. There were 281 condos that sold last week for an average sales price of $555,000 and a median sales price of 465000 Meanwhile, months of inventory, that gauge of how hot the market is, it went up to 1.83 months of inventory. And this is compared to last week's 1.7 months of inventory. So we really did see a huge increase in the months of inventory, which again is great news if you're a buyer out there. And by the way, I'm working on a video uh, for the top 10 markets that might possibly see home prices decline in the state of Massachusetts. It's data packed. If this is something that interests you, then please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you're ultimately the first person to see it. Um, I'm hoping to release it next week. I have it over being edited right now. So like I said, hopefully that is coming to you next week. I think it should be a really great uh, video with a lot of fantastic inventory. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't. So the interest rate market, we gotta talk about these interest rates because ultimately this is one of the biggest drivers for for real estate, right? Interest rates, they're close to, well, they're, they're 14 year highs when you look at this, right? And this is slowing down our market. So just two weeks ago, we were talking interest rates being at the high 5%. Now we're talking about the high 6% range. So what does this mean to you as a home buyer or maybe you as a possible seller? Well, ultimately this means home buyers currently in the market just lost 10 percent of their buying power in just a matter of two weeks so if they had a mortgage payment that they were comfortable with and let's just say it bought them a seven hundred thousand dollar house if they wanted to keep that same exact mortgage payment today it would only buy them around a six hundred and thirty thousand dollar house that's how much these interest rates make a huge difference and this is what buyers today are dealing with in just a matter of two weeks they can see their buying power just quickly erode so if you're on the seller side, you need to keep in mind the psychology of what these buyers are going to, and they might truly not be able to afford that full asking price today when they could have just two weeks ago. So just keep it in mind, this is what 
you're dealing with if you're on the seller side. And if you're on the buyer side, you need to constantly get updates on your pre-approval, right? How much can I afford? You wanna to continue to communicate with your loan officer. I'll say it this way, if your loan officer is it continually communicating with you about your new buyer power, then you might just have the wrong uh, loan officer who is ultimately setting you up with a, a lot of heartache because this is a tough market. Communication is more important than ever as rates continue to go up because it is a volatile market. We're gonna have some big um, data coming out this week, ultimately new home sales. The Federal Reserve comes out tomorrow where they're talking about uh, they're gonna give the new benchmark rate. And then we have initial jobless claims, which is gonna be so, so, so very important. The Federal Reserve needs to see the jobs. They need to see the market, the labor market starting to relax, right? Because this is ultimately one of the biggest drivers of inflation. They need to see inflation to taper down. Otherwise, we're just going to continue to see interest rates go up and up and up and up until it finally does. So let's talk about builder sentiment because it plunged last month. It is down to a number of 46. So it's an index right up to 100. Uh, in regard to 100, I mean, builders are ecstatic. Zero, I mean, they're dead, <laughs> right? The market's just completely done. So to put it in perspective, in January of this year, the builder index segment, they were feeling a number of 83, right? So a lot of builders felt really confident about the marketplace and the products that they were gonna, in the future of the new build segment. Today, or I should say in August, it was 46. Talk about a huge decline in just a matter of seven to eight months. I mean, just absolutely enormous. And so what ultimately this means for you is a couple things. Number one, this means that builders permits, like the new supply that should be coming on the market a year or so from now, they're gonna kind of stop. They're gonna say, you know what? We gotta see how this, 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 this plays through. We have to see what's gonna happen with this market. We're not gonna make a huge investment, build out these properties and then not be able to sell them. But what it means for builders that either have supply that's currently on the market or supply that is coming on the market, you're starting to see them slash prices and offer additional incentives. Take a look at this property at 30 Penn in Boston. It's a new construction building where they are currently offering home buyers five years of prepaid condo fees as well as reducing the price and storage from $10,000 down to $5,000. Now, why are they doing this? Why are they offering these incentives? Ultimately, what they want to do is offer and entice buyers with incentives to get them there to buy the house rather than reducing the sales price. Because once they reduce the sales price, they kind and it gets published, they kind of have to do it to, for everybody. And it's also a quick and sure way to piss off a lot of buyers that have already bought properties in the building because it ultimately just, it, it creates a tailspin is really what it does. So builders, they don't want to reduce prices. They'd much rather offer incentives, but some builders are being driven to the point where they actually need to reduce prices as well. So this is something to keep an eye on. This is just one building in Massachusetts. It's a really bigger problem, ultimately in the South or the Midwest. It's not as big of a problem here in the state of Massachusetts, but it is definitely something that we are going to continue to keep our eye on. So let's just jump over to that fun segment last week we took a look at the most expensive house in the state of massachusetts this week we're going to take a look at the most expensive condo in the state of massachusetts so so we're going to move to this kind of 34 and a half beacon street on beacon hill like it's, it's not even complete yet it's just studded out it's waiting for you to finish it. It's actually a combination of three units. It's gonna span over 8,000 square feet with direct elevator access and also has a 1,600 square foot penthouse terrace. I mean, that terrace and the views from there must be absolutely insane and absolutely beautiful. But like I said, it's not even done yet. It's a five bedroom, six full bath and two half bath house, which I don't get why you need an additional full bath more than the amount of bedrooms that you have. I, I, I don't get that. It also has four garage parking spaces with an asking price of $20 million. I put a link below if you want to take a look for a little fun and just see what $20 million gets you. <laughs> Not much from a being able to live there now standpoint, but it's pretty interesting to take a look at. Um, if you have any questions or comments about this market data, this video, or the real estate market in general, please throw them in the comments section below. I answer everybody. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate your time and you watching this video, so I'm gonna take my time and always answer all your questions. And if you're thinking about buying or selling a house here in the state of Massachusetts, then I would love to chat with you. I love talking about real estate. It is a passion. Um, so I, your goals, I, I wanna hear them. I wanna hear 
hear about it. I want to help formulate a game plan for you to accomplish and achieve those goals. And can you do me a huge favor? If you know of anybody who's thinking about buying or selling a house, making most likely the biggest investment of their lifetime, can you please send them this video? Because a educated buyer is more important than ever in these kind of crazy times that we're ultimately seeing. And should they have any questions like you, I invite them to reach out. Would love to chat with them as well. But ultimately, until next week.